I'm going to leave 27 and 28 for you to do. I'll do number 29 because it has a little bit of a different thing there. It has a chain rule that we have to deal with. So I'll do number 29. Leave myself some room to do the others. squared plus y squared is equal to, open up a set of parentheses, 2x squared plus 2y squared minus x whole darn thing squared, and we're going to write the equation of the tangent line at the point 0, 1 half. Okay. Make that so it doesn't make a shadow. So, differentiate from left to right. And I know it's going to take a lot of room, so I'm going to give myself some extra space by moving all the way over here to y, y primed. Left hand side done. Now let's work on the right hand side. Two falls down. Inside stays the same, subtract 1 from the exponent, multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the inside gives me 4x plus 4y times y primed minus 1. Okay. So I need to get all of my prime stuff on one side and all of my doesn't have prime stuff in it on the other side. That's going to take some algebra. First thing I'm going to acknowledge, I'm going to erase what I just wrote down. I'm going to acknowledge the fact that everybody here is being multiplied by 2. I can divide this side by 2. I can divide this side by 2. That 2 cancels with that 2. This 2 cancels with those two twos. So now I have x plus y times y primed. You didn't have to do that, but we have so much to multiply. I just wanted to simplify my life. So now I'm going to multiply all of this stuff together. Yep, so I have 2x squared times 4x. I have 2x squared times 4yy primed, so plus 8x squared y y primed minus 2x squared. So I multiplied everything in the second set of parentheses by 2x squared. I'm going to do the same thing with minus 2y squared. So minus 8x cubed minus 8, oops, minus 8xy squared because I have 2y squared times 4x, so minus 8xy squared minus 8y cubed plus 2y squared. And even with the extra room, I'm almost out of room. But all I have to do is multiply negative x times everything. So I have minus 4x squared minus 4xy plus x. Whoosh. So now I'm going to, let's see, doesn't really matter. I just need to get all my prime stuff on one side and all my doesn't have prime stuff in it on the other side. And I lost some over here. 
I'm going to go back and fix it. I'm going to give myself more rest. Okay, 2x squared times 4x. 2x squared gives me 8x squared y, I left out my y primed last time, minus 2x squared, minus 8xy squared, minus 8 y cubed times y primed, I left out my y primed last time, plus 2y squared minus 4x squared minus 4xy y primed plus x. And now I got it right. Okay. You know you can fast forward through the places where I make mistakes. So let's get all our prime stuff on one side. All our doesn't have prime stuff on the other. So I'm going to bring this primed over here. So I'll subtract 8x cubed. I'll add 2x squared. I'll add 8xy squared. I'll subtract 2y squared. I'll add 4x squared. Started doing a rhythm mistake in my head. And I will subtract x. Then on this side, I will have 8x squared y times y primed minus 8y cubed y primed minus 4xy times y primed minus y times y primed. Okay. You know I'm going to take a break and go back over this and make sure I didn't lose anybody. Now I have x minus, I'm rewriting all the stuffy stuff. Actually, let's combine this 4x squared with this 2x squared, and that gives me 6x squared. I also have an x minus an x, so let's just do away with that. So I have minus 8x cubed. I have 2x squared plus 4x squared gives me 6x squared. Now it's not looking as bad as it did. That took care of that. There, that, plus that combined. I have that, I have that. Now, let's factor out y primed. I have 8x squared y minus 8y cubed minus 4xy minus y times y primed divide That was a lot of work. Okay, we're done finding the derivative. Now you have to plug in zero and a half. So y primed evaluated zero and one half. You don't need to watch me do arithmetic, so I'm gonna plug all this in and graph it, and I'll meet you back here in a minute and do the same thing. All right, it took me a while to find my mistake. It's when I miss you guys being around to say, Miss Schlieper, you accidentally changed that plus sign to a minus sign. 
And when you did that, everything was wrong. So I had to go in and fix all my signs. Then when I plugged in my slope, I got one. At first I was intimidated having to plug all that in, but then I realized everything with X's in it was just zero, zero, zero. So I end up with one. Y minus my Y coordinate is equal to slope times X minus my X coordinate. And there's the pretty picture. Example four asks you to do a second derivative. So let's find derivative with respect to X of X to the four plus Y to the fourth equals 16. First part's easy. 4X plus 4Y cubed times dy dx is equal to zero. So let's isolate dy dx. And let's see, actually, I guess it still has 4y cubed sitting next to it. I'll just subtract 4x squared from each side. Cubed, 4x cubed from each side. So dy dx is x cubed over y cubed. I'm going to write it again just because I had to switch sides of the paper. x cubed over y cubed. So my second derivative, if I take the derivative of dy dx with respect to x, It'll give me the second derivative, which is low high, low high. The quotient rule will try. It's low d high less high 3y squared below. all over low times low. Not so bad. We'll stop here and finish up with another video on the derivatives of inverse trig functions. Yay! Okay, I left off the last step of the last problem we did. I needed to take this x cubed over y cubed and substitute it in so I get an answer that only has x's and y's in it. And then we could simplify it. Let's see, I have x to the sixth power. I have a three. I have a y squared up top and a y cubed down below. So all of that is over y to the sixth power, we could even simplify it a little bit more, but I'm going to leave it like that and call it a day.